All right, this is uh, an affirmation of what uh, I just said in a video uh, uh, title that's not just uh, Chicago. Um, police departments all over the country, they, they need to make changes. And, and they need to make changes uh, before people die, not afterwards. As you, know, you saw uh, in Chicago, um, it took a ton of uh, black people being killed in order for a uh, light to be shined on uh, the situation. In this case, it, it took a, a, a woman who uh, had a minor traffic violation to die while in police custody for a light to be shined on this situation. You know, a, as I indicated in the previous video, uh, there need to be major changes uh, across the country and damn near every uh, police department uh, to bring them up to the 20th century to uh, get rid of uh, racism within the uh, police departments and to treat people fairly. Hey, criminals are criminals and, you know, fuck real criminals. But uh, even criminals deserve a fair treatment, okay, because they're innocent until proven guilty. So everybody should be able to receive fair treatment and not just uh, dismissed, and in particular, uh, black people being, uh, black people, and I'm going to include uh, Hispanics as well, being dismissed as uh, something uh, less than human. The Texas jail where Sandra Bland died needs a major overhaul, according to an independent panel tasked with looking into her death. The findings say that the Waller County Jail staff persistently dehumanized inmates. Recommended changes include better mental health screenings for inmates, body cameras and anger management training for jailers, and a new building. Bland was found hanged in her cell in July, three days after being arrested near Houston for minor traffic violations. Her death caused a national outcry after a grand jury decided not to indict anyone in her case. Waller County Sheriff Glenn Smith said, many of the recommendations in the report are doable and staff de-escalation training will start in June. We're going back to the panel, Ralph Chittums of the Republican Party, Michelle Bernard, political analyst and attorney with Bernard Center for Women, Politics, and Public Policy, and David Swerdlick, assistant editor at the Washington Post. This, to me, sounds an awful lot like the Chicago uh, report just moved to another state. I, can't, I could barely watch just the clip that we just took a look at and look at her face. It is one report after another, and I, the country needs to be outraged. There is no way that we can continue to look at death after death after death and people not have a sense that the African American community is under t under attack. No one wants to confront the issue. Whites get so angry when you say that it that there appears to be a war on black boys and black men, that there is a war on African American women, but it looks to me like we are slaughtered. And a report comes out and everything is supposed to be better. Nothing's changing. No, I, David, I agree. Yeah. Ralph? I, I do agree. I mean, when people die in police custody, there has to be an investigation. There has to be. There's no reason for someone to just be picked up for a minor traffic violation and then within a day or two, they're dead in a cell and there's no investigation, there's, there's no accountability. I mean, what, I, what, I find, what I find interesting here is it says in the report, the findings say that the Waller County Jail staff persistently dehumanized inmates. When you talk about dehumanizing inmates, that has nothing to do with a new building. That has not, that has very little to do with anger management. We're, to me, we're talking about a problem that as Africans in America and now African Americans, we have been battling since we got here in 1619, and that is to be considered human beings. How, how does a report change that type of misperception? It can't, I mean, it, the culture has to fundamentally change and with regard to the criminal justice system i question whether or not the culture can change until we start not only investigating 
police misconduct. And again, I want to, with the caveat being, police work is so difficult. But when there is, when when there are misdoings, there needs to be an investigation, and people need to be arrested and imprisoned. I mean, I have family members and friends in law enforcement mm -hmm. from here in California, across the country, and I can say with a hundred percent certainty that most law enforcement officers are good. Yes. They get up every morning, they put on that uniform, the badge, the gun, and when they kiss their wife or husband and go walk out the door, everyone understands there's a good chance that they may not come home that night. That is true. And that doesn't change the fact that when one of these law enforcement officers crosses the line and does something wrong, that officer needs to be held accountable. But I would just caution everyone not not to just throw a blanket indictment across all law enforcement officers. And no all right, and, and I'm going to counter him by saying when they kiss their husband or their wife goodbye, uh, there is not a good chance that they will not come home. There is a chance that they won't come home. But the way that all, you know, the police act uh, these days, uh, there is a good chance that they will come home because they t take absolutely no risk in any situation. Even when dealing with unarmed uh, people that clearly have issues, they are unwilling to take any risk. They, uh, for the most part, especially if you're black, they will shoot first and deal with the consequences later. And those consequences almost never uh, fall into the category of them being held accountable for misconduct to the point of either manslaughter or murder. So what he said, I, I'm, I'm not going along with what he said, that there's a good chance. They believe there's a good chance that they won't come home. When it, no one is doing that, and this report isn't doing that, but there are too many innocent people being shot down in the street, um, and, it, and it's been going on for far too long. And the major thing, I think, that has really brought all this to the forefront is video. Right. Here's another story I want to talk about. Uh all right, so um, again, this is uh, basically just a follow-up of the uh, story that uh, I just uh, posted regarding the Chicago report. Ch change has to happen, and we all have to recognize that, and we all have to push our elected leaders uh, the uh, police departments, we have, they have to be held accountable, okay? And um, these damn grand juries uh, that keep coming back, uh, not finding a probable cause uh, to prosecute, you know, that's, that's bullshit too. And we as black people need to do our part to get on uh, into these jury pools and onto these grand juries to uh, press for justice. I'm not talking about retribution. I'm not talking about revenge. I'm talking about justice. And for the majority of the people that see these videos, that see how these cops act, we all know what the right thing is. Now, whether you want to allow uh, your own bigotry uh, to color your uh, opinion, well, okay, fine, that's up to you. But justice is justice, and uh, there aren't two justices, there's just one. And um, I'm pretty sure in the majority of cases, we all will agree on what justice actually is.